John Gibbs is a conservative America First Republican. He's running for Congress in Michigan. He worked in the Trump administration under Dr. Ben Carson at the Department of Housing and Urban Development. That's where he oversaw an annual budget of $8 billion to help fight homelessness and expand economic opportunities. Now, he says he's going to be a part of the red wave in November and help put America back on track. Would you please welcome to the show, John Gibbs. John, you have a pretty amazing story. You got out of Stanford, Correct, yes. which is tough to get out of because it's really hard to get in it. Sure. And you worked for a while in the high tech industry and worked for a few struggling little companies like Apple yes. uh, in cybersecurity. Right. And then you wanted to do something pretty amazing, get in public service. So you go to Harvard uh, School of Public Administration, you get an MA there, you end up in government. You go to Japan, oversee missionaries there. I mean, your life is kind of an amazing combination of things that don't necessarily fit together. Yeah, you know, when you look back at it, it seems to kind of make sense looking back, but at the time, you know, you're kind of feeling your way through and it's just so great how God opens doors and you walk through. Uh, Governor, you've had such a great life yourself. I'm sure you've seen that phenomenon, how you get ready to undertake something big and you say, okay, here we go. It's me and Jesus and all the great folks out there praying with you. And you go through and you see that God opens the door and you walk through it and you ask God what's next. And he does the same thing over again. So it's really quite a great journey and also uh, a tribute. Very thankful to how I was raised by my parents. You know, they didn't go to college. My sisters and I were the first in our family and they really focused on education for us growing up. So just very thankful for that as well. But it's been a wonderful journey. Well, it's taken well with you, John. I mean, you didn't just get a decent education. You got <laughs> one of the finest educations in the country. You speak Japanese fluently. I do, yes. Now, how on earth did you take up Japanese? Was that part of the high tech world that you were in? You know, when I was in high school, I was really into Japanese animation. What? It's kind of these uh, <laughs> cartoon type movies, but they're more mature themed, like talking about war and peace and uh -huh. th things like that. And uh, it's pretty popular here. I don't know how it became popular, but they're kind of cool little uh, movies to watch. So they're in Japanese, obviously, and I really enjoyed Spanish. I like foreign languages overall. So I said, why don't I try my hand at another one here and try learning some Japanese? So I taught myself a little bit in high school. Then when I went out to Stanford, I did study a couple of years as well. And I also studied abroad there, um, living with the Homestay family and doing an internship with a company over there. So that's how I got my, my fluency and learned about the culture. What was it that made you say, I'm gonna run for Congress in my home state? You know, I just felt that uh, I had to serve. You know, I had been in Japan serving as a missionary and uh, I kind of looked back home. And this is, you know, when uh, 2014, 15, when Obama was still there, I said, we got a problem. If I don't switch my mission field, as it were, from Japan to public policy, we're going to be in big trouble. So that's how I kind of got into the administration. But I said, after our administration ended, maybe I'll be a regular American again, you know, work for a think tank, not get attacked by CNN yeah. anymore, you know, et cetera. <laughs> but uh, I said, I've got to serve. You know, I think there's a big leadership gap back home uh, in the district that I am running in. Um, and I really felt called to, to use all the skills that God gave me to go back and do that. So after talking with lots of folks who are wiser and more experienced than me and getting some advice, I said, okay, uh, let's do it. You unseated an incumbent Republican Congressman. That doesn't happen very often. Right. I mean, it just doesn't happen. So uh, you run, you take out a guy that has uh, been there a while. Now it's interesting and I think this is hilarious. The Democrats threw a lot of money on you thinking that, well, if John Gibbs is the candidate, he'll be easier to beat. Boy, are they messed up now, huh? Yeah, I mean, they uh, spent a whole bunch of money. Uh, you know, who knows what they were trying to do? Uh, the amount they spent was relatively small compared to what was out there, but they figured I'd be easier to beat in the general election, uh, which is actually false. We have all the data showing that's not the case, but hey, Never interrupt your enemy while he's making a mistake. <laughs> so, uh, Good point, John. Good point. <laughs> Very true.